Well, we're back, everybody. We thought there was going to be eight episodes of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, so I said let's film four and then four more, but it turns out there's only six. Because they ran out of ideas, and they said let's just end the show. <laughs> and, and I, think, I think my problem with the show is there should have only been four. It should have been a movie. Yeah. I wanted to bring up that very exact same point, is that this feels like a movie uh, that's, that's just condensed, that, especially the last episode. The last episode where things happened. The last episode was like the last act of a feature film, and then, then all the pieces all fell into place where I was like, oh, boom, 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 boom. You can visualize all the beats I as can, a movie as yes. opposed to stretched yes. out. And you had said, I don't know if you were just talking out of your ass or theorizing that they had started with an idea for a movie and then said, oh, fuck movies, let's make a TV show for our streaming service. That was my theorizing. I don't know if this officially started as a movie, and then they said, we'll make it a series instead, that may have happened. But by the time you get to the, the sixth episode, I was actually enjoying it more than I had the previous episodes, because I was like, hey, it actually feels like it's going somewhere. My overall opinion hasn't really changed much. I still like it. Other than, the, other than the Mandalorian season one, this is the most I've liked Star Wars in the last 35 years. But I got some, I got some nitpicks. It's like they, they have their, their third act and they do it twice. It's like our, 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 our rebels are cornered, the Imperials have them pinned down, and Obi-Wan gives himself up so everyone else can escape. Mm -hmm. And then in the very next episode, they're on the ship, and oh no, our heroes are pinned down by the Empire that's right on their ass. The Empire's right there, and so Obi-Wan gives himself up so everyone can escape. Like, why did you do that twice? Cut out all that shit they did on the spaceship, and then just have the whole thing take place on the planet. Mm -hmm. And Obi-Wan's confrontation with Vader is on the planet, and then you don't need to do that really awkward thing where he takes off in an escape pod, and Darth Vader looks like he looks like, like, like an idiot like Kylo Ren did in The Last Jedi, where he's like, no, we're going to give up on catching the, the people we need to catch so I can settle my personal vendetta. And it makes Darth Vader look like an idiot. And they did the same thing twice, two episodes in a row. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, every episode was kind of the same thing. Oh, no, they're coming for us. We've got to run down this hallway and get away. Yeah. But I'll say, because you guys liked the other episodes more than I did, uh, because you were paid by Disney, clearly. <laughs> that was a real thing people were saying, because people are idiots. Yes, Disney paid me to say it was super okay. Yes, yes, that, that was clearly a video sponsored by Disney. Richard, um, uh, by the way, when, when I came here, I noticed your Rolls Royce was double parked. <laughs> do, you, do you think you should move it? I, they, they gave me three more. It's okay if this uh, oh, one okay, gets Oh, okay, well, okay. I just wanted to double check that. I'm sorry, Jay, what you were saying? Uh, oh, I was going to say, these last two episodes, I liked a lot more than the previous episodes, partially because it felt like it was actually starting to go somewhere. Uh, but one thing we brought up was Darth Vader and how he's not scary anymore. He's not intimidating, and he feels like a guy that you would see walking around Disney World or whatever. These last two episodes were pretty decent Vader. That was a pretty exciting fight scene. The, well, the, the, the last episode fight, but even before that, when he's fighting Reva, and he's putting in, like, no effort because yeah. he doesn't have to, right. and he's just kind of, like, standing there. He's like, you're, you're not going to do anything to me. It's like, okay, that feels kind of like Vader. Do you think, well, do you think when Qui-Gon showed up at the end, was he was like, uh, everybody got stabbed in the chest with lightsabers, but I died? <laughs> I think the moral of the story of, of this and, and the prequels is finish the job. <laughs> because Reva stabbed the, uh, the, the, the um, Inqu Inquisitor, Grand Inquisitor, and then she walked away. And he, uh, he's a weird alien, so maybe she missed his vital organs because they're in different places or something. But then Reva gets stabbed, right? And he says to her, I survived because revenge is the strongest, like, will to live or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Revenge does wonders for the will to live, don't you think? And then him and Vader walk away. And then on, on uh, Mustafar, uh, Obi-Wan didn't finish the job when he w could have cut up Anakin 25 times. Mm -hmm. Look, I think it doesn't really matter. Like you say, you could take the lightsaber. Like really, you just stab somebody in the chest, it's a fucking lightsaber. Just go like this afterwards. Yeah. But really, 
They cut Darth Maul in half, and that didn't stop him from getting robot legs. That's true. What did that happen in? Because people, I saw some comments about that. It's cartoons. The, the Clone I've got a cartoon. Cartoon. We said it, Clone Wars or Rebels or something. But his hologram appears in um, Solo. Solo, oh, yeah. and then there's a low angle shot where you can see a robot leg. Okay. I also wanted to say uh, Vader buries Obi Wan Kenobi in rocks. Finish the job. Then Obi Wan cuts up Vader. He chops his mask open, and then Vader's like, and then. I'm that, going that to walk thing. away. Yes, one way or the away. other, whichever one of us dies, I'm going to finish this. Nope. Well, in this case, they couldn't finish it because we have the prequels and we have the original trilogy. And that's what's interesting about this is that the last episode especially, it kind of just becomes a remake of Revenge of the Sith. It's like a rematch. And then it ends with, because the Revenge of the Sith, the, the whole prequel trilogy is about... Uh, Anakin turning to the dark side and then you get to the end of this and it's like Vader turns more to the dark side this is a it's a remake of Revenge of the Sith and it's also a remake of A New Hope we will discuss the location but a safe house like the one you were in has been found in two systems Tala Tala can you hear me come in 3PO and Empire Strikes Back. Again, it's like poetry, it's sort of if they rhyme. Mm -hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Hopefully it'll work. Star Wars is creatively bankrupt. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was watching it and I was thinking, and, and I know this is blasphemy to say any comparisons to Empire Strikes Back, but in the, tr in the idea that this is a, a what, six hour long movie, I was thinking, like, what, what happens in Empire Strikes Back, right? It, it opens up on the Hoth planet. It's cold. We, we see Luke Skywalker. There's Luke Skywalker. He's on a, a, a Tauntaun, checking perimeters or doing... Ah, oh, Wampa. Ah. Little, and then we reunite with all of our characters. Battle. Empire lands. Battle. The, everyone escapes and goes their other ways. The middle of the movie, you, you, Luke is on Dagobah. Han Solo is fleeing the Empire. And then in the end, there's no battles in the middle. And then at the end, Luke... No, there's character work and drama in the middle. Right. And, and, and Luke says, I have to go save my friends. Vader's trying to draw... There's lots of drawing people out. Reva kidnaps Leia to draw out Kenobi. But she's drawing out Kenobi so that she could draw out Vader. <laughs> And Vader's using Reva to draw out Kenobi, also that nobody could kill anybody. <laughs> then you will die. But but if you took this Obi Wan series, right? And what are what would be our big uh, uh, the big action set pieces would be the the kidnapping of Leia, right? That could be instead of an embarrassing little. <laughs> Uh, Mary Kate Ashley Olsen <laughs> chased through the woods. <laughs> it could have been an epic scene where uh, a small group of pirates they show up at the the, the castle, the the palace, right. and they shoot up the palace. Shoot up the palace, oh. and 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 uh, I wanted to say Tony Danza. What's his name? Uh, Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith is running, and they're all oh, and uh, everyone's everyone's blowing things up and running around and. Um, you got spaceships landing. You have big battle, almost like the Hoth battle. Uh, oh, the the escape! I, I like that scene where the uh, transport ship is fleeing. The it's nice to see a star destroyer, just a basic one star destroyer, not ten million of them, <laughs> not the Rogue One like cluster fuck battle, but just one star destroyer chasing that ship. And that was nice, and that could have been a fun little because that that reminded me of uh, Empire. When just a simple Millennium Falcon hiding, playing hide and seek with the Star Destroyer. Yeah. And trying to find him. And that's kind of what that was. And you have all those, those beats. And it's like they, instead of having a couple of solid action set pieces with some character stuff, they just smeared it all out into six hours. So really, this is. And every episode had to have its own little bad action scene. Yeah. <laughs> this is episode like. 3.1 it's like it's like it felt like the next star wars movie more so than anything in the the sequel trilogy 
Those yeah. felt like, re this felt just like a sequel to Revenge of the Sith, like the next film. Well, that's that's kind of the problem with it. Is it's, it's weird. It's sort of a sequel to Revenge of the Sith. It's sort of a prequel to A New Hope, which means no one can really do a whole lot. And I kind of like the little drama with Obi-Wan at the end of this, where it's like, oh, that final fight with Vader, like, because you know that they're both going to get away. Right. So it's just sort of like, oh, uh, uh, Darth Vader slash Anakin is kind of absolving Obi-Wan of his guilt. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. It's like, oh, it's a little character thing. Um, right. The Obi-Wan show is about the character of Obi-Wan, finally, when you get to that final episode. Yes. And I liked that aspect of it, because it, it's small, but that's all you can really do, is small-scale stuff. The big shadow over this whole thing, right? And you've said it a million times, we've all said it a million times, the big shadow over this whole thing is that we never got that connection of friendship between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Mm -hmm. That's the big missing piece. Everyone's like, you know, I, I, I looked at reviews or Twitter things, you know, when the finale happened, mm -hmm. you know, and then it was a butterfly tears situation. <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh, I, I, I nearly fainted when they said, you know, and I get that, but it's like we're told that they were the best of friends. I haven't felt you this tense since, since we fell into that nest of gun dogs. <laughs> you fell into that nightmare, Master, and I rescued you, remember? Oh, yes. And George Lucas, he's, he's a very talented and creative guy. Um, he's, he's, he's a visionary with, with all, of the, all of the stuff that he's done. But when it comes to people... Emotions. He's very, uh, like... They're best friends. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he Love doesn't. Love is bad. That's his I, weakness. Is is like working with actors, and yeah, everybody who worked with George Lucas will tell you that. What am I doing? And the bad part is saying I'm doing this for Padme. I'm doing this for us, and we can be, we can. It'll be better for the universe. It'll be better for everybody. I said to George, you can type this. Stuff, <laughs> but you can't say it. They okay, don't say the line. Say it faster. Uh. The prequels found a way to make Samuel fucking Jackson boring. Right. <laughs> he doesn't know how to direct actors in the emotional way. Here, everything is soft and smooth. And he glossed over their whole friendship in a in a this happened in between two films. Mm -hmm. And then now they're picking up the pieces and they're trying to say, look at this epic fight between these two friends that did all this Former stuff. Former friends. And, and it's like that's the that's just like the big, big hollow part. It's like a big thing thought, that's hollow in the center. It looks great and it works, but it's just hollow because that emotional component is not there. Yeah. I thought they were going to go into that a little bit on, I think it was the last episode when we see the flashbacks, where we see a kind of creepy de age uh, yeah. Aiden Christensen. Yeah. I was like, oh, we're going to see a little bit of them, but no, it's just them training with lightsabers some more. Yeah. And that's kind of it. And they're trying to say something about their personalities in that fight. I kind of like what they did with that. Too, too little, too late uh, with this whole overarching story of Anakin and Obi-Wan. And too little, too late with what they do with like the last episode of this show. It's like, oh, Reva, we finally get her backstory. There's a little bit going on with her that's kind of interesting. We should have gotten that three or four episodes ago I, I, and build on it. I like the conclusion to her, her bit in this show. I, I, yeah, I, no, I like once they finally got there, I was like, oh, okay. I wish it wasn't interspersed because it's weird that she gets the Tatooine while Obi-Wan is still fleeing the, the fucking Star Destroyer. That's weird. I understand, oh, the hyperdrive wasn't working. <laughs> that, that should have been like weeks or months later. That should have been like at the tail end of everything else that happened, like an epilogue. Sure. I genuinely liked the final like fight with Vader and Obi-Wan. Yeah. It's the first thing on this show where I'm not just like, oh, that part was kind of okay. I was like, I actually like this. Not just because they've, they've built up Obi-Wan throughout the season, but also the way it's executed. How the whole thing is pretty much lit with just their lightsabers. 
Yes and no. I mean, in the, I mean, just watching it, it was a good fight. It, it highlights something that just annoys the fuck out of me. The inconsistent way like the force is portrayed and what they can do wow. and when they can do it. That's always and been the case. If they can do the kind of shit they do in that fight where they're just throwing mountains everywhere <laughs> and, and Darth Vader is just throwing Reva around with the force, why do they even bother with the fucking lightsaber other than they have to because the lightsaber is the only reason people like Star Wars in the first fucking because, place. Because it was introduced in a, a cheap sci-fi movie from the 70s. Yeah, it is. They're stuck with it. It it drives me, and that's this is that's like on the level of like a weird Rich Evans pet peevish kind of thing. But well, it drives me nuts. It's, it's inconsistent. I agree. Um, I I think there's they they should have established more clear rules with the Force, because it's like uh, Vader grabbing that spaceship, and then rip, oh, yeah. ripping it apart, and then it's like, well, okay, uh, you know, and then you get yeah, like, I'm gonna pull my light sword out now. <laughs> I can, just I can crush throw her a fucking head. spaceship the size of the Sears Tower around like nothing, but let me pull out my fucking light sword. Ooh! Well, it's like, okay, well, well uh, my nerd brain... You just brain. make everyone's head explode. Just, just crush everyone's head like a fucking grape, because obviously you can do that! Uh, that was over the top. Over the top. Because why didn't he grab the Millennium Falcon when it was fleeing Hoth? <sighs> maybe, it's, see, maybe it's like... Like, uh, uh, remember Count Doku? He's like, Bruh, and he, he, he drops the, the ceiling, the rock, big, big piece of rock down on Yoda, oh, and Yoda's like, ooh, woo, and then, <laughs> and then Sidious is, is throwing things around. And so, so it's like, Vader was like, on, on, in, uh, on Hoth, he's like, well, I gotta, I gotta stop Han Solo because maybe he can lead me to Luke. So he's like, oh, they got away. <laughs> But, but this, when he ripped the ship apart, he was really mad. So emotions kind of played into it. I'm starting to think Star Wars is kind of stupid. Welcome to the party. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember when Yoda, like, he, he, like, see, I like the force when it's just very subtle. Like, you can move things. Um, it would be different if that like took like a ton of concentration. That's what I always got out of the original trilogy. Was yeah. like, yeah, you have to really focus to lift a rock. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or Yoda, Yoda struggled a lot to lift the X-wing out of the water. Yeah, and he's you know, and that and that's like that's perfect. But you're right, throwing people around. And and uh, what was the purpose of uh, Vader? Remember in uh, of the is it called the Empire Strikes Back? In that, <laughs> I heard of film, that film, <laughs> Vader didn't want to kill Luke but he wanted to bring him home as a prize to the emperor, right? And sure, maybe he wanted to just play around with him for a little bit, but how come he just didn't go <laughs> lower him right into the fucking carbonite freezer, right? Right, exactly. He couldn't, he couldn't. Luke jumped out of it. And then he's like, oh, just clever. Just grab him, put him back in with your mind. Just grab him and just slam him into there. And, and you know, if he can hold Obi-Wan in the air, like that he wanted that the use the force to break all of his limbs and then dump them into the I know, and freezer. It's like, uh, the, you know, Obi-Wan throwing all the rocks. I mean, it was cool, but inconsistency. It it looked cool, but it it it's it drives me fucking nuts. That's Star Wars. Lucas himself broke his own rules. He's the one who did this. Not not the new era, because Empire was so perfect. When, when Luke saw... saw um, George Lucas directed Empire, right? No. He directed that film? No, he didn't. Irving Kirshner did. Oh. He, he, he objected to everything in it. But um, <laughs> when Luke saw... Luke is, Luke is, oh, also, I wanted to bring up another point. Give me, let me get all this out. Uh, when Luke is laying... Uh, he's almost frozen to death. That's when he sees Obi-Wan. Oh, Luke. You will see Yoda and Obi-Wan's way in the distance, right? And so you have that, you have the Force Ghost, which is great because it's, it's, it's ambiguous on whether or not it's in Luke's head, he's delirious, or he's, Obi-Wan's really talking to him. It's done as tastefully as you can do the concept of a Force Ghost. Yes, yes. and Yoda lifting the X-Wing out, out of the ground, the, the Luke Vader fight, a couple of like little tricks with the Force, but mostly still lightsabers, great. Return of the Jedi, Force Ghost is now sitting on a log. Sitting on like a log. Kermit the Frog. E extended casual conversation. <laughs> and then prequels, uh, 
lightsaber fights, uh, well, now, now it's not just like kind of like awkward stunt guys hitting lightsabers. Now we can do anything. Mm -hmm. Let's have the lightsaber fights be fucking crazy, but that's still not enough. Let's throw <laughs> shit around. Let's have Darth Sidious throwing those uh, pods, the, the politician pods. Oh yeah. And he's like spinning him and throwing, and Yoda's like, eh, he's, he's spinning one around and he throws it back and it does nothing. And then, then they're throwing rocks. And, uh, and so that's Lucas and he established that. And I don't know what, he's, what he was thinking. And that's, that's another thing why those, the prequels. It's cool. I mean, I. We have to have the, the we have to top the last fight, the last fight. The, the fight, the fight of, with Vader and Obi-Wan in this on that rock planet when, you know, with the exception of Obi-Wan throwing all the rocks, it was neat. Oh, with, with, it was now, much better was, than Mustafar. Since you've established that Jedi can just do that shit whenever they need to now, yes, I'm, I agree, it was neat. It was a neat fight. <laughs> but yeah, you have to do it all the time. I always had a working theory about lightsabers that I thought would have been very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And I don't know if I brought it up ever. Remember, I, I thought about it in this, and Obi-Wan has those rebels or the, the resistance group of people. They have, they have a box of like nine lightsabers, right? And I was like, well, Obi-Wan should just pass those out to everybody. They're shooting blasters at all those. Just give everyone, give Kamal, uh, what are, how do you say his name? What are they gonna do with them? Kamal Nujam, Nujami. Oh, Kamal Nanjiani, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, give him one. They could turn it on. <laughs> How? They're not trained since they were little children. They weren't younglings with stupid helmets on. No! I need a weapon! You have one! And that they can't properly use look, the look, lightsaber. The lightsaber's main point is deflecting bullets, which apparently Kylo Ren could just grab bullets with his mind, so you don't light, Jedi's don't need lightsabers. I'm, I'm, <laughs> but, but you can't block bullets unless you have the force, so no, it's useless. No, you could chop the fuck up stormtroopers. If 10 stormtroopers were, 100 stormtroopers were running into the room and I had a lightsaber, would just be like, and start fucking chopping them up. And you, why didn't you do that? Here's, here's, here's something I've always thought about and I always thought would have been neat, right? When you have the force, right? You can kind of, you have, you're like one with nature and the universe and you can move things with your mind, right? Mm -hmm. And I always thought this, and I don't know if I've ever said this in a video that we've done, but I thought when, when Han Solo picks up the lightsaber and turns it on to cut open the belly of the Tauntaun, he's like, ugh, ugh, and he's a little awkward with it and he doesn't quite know what he's doing and he looks like he's struggling. So I thought that if a regular person turned on a lightsaber and tried to pick it up, the sheer like power behind it would mm. cause it to be so like heavy and, and awkward and almost impossible to use. So sort of like a sword in the stone kind of situation. Exactly, where, where it's, it's just like a beam of pure energy that is like, it, it's, it's out of like physics. And Only it's a true Jedi can. Yes, yeah. and in order to, to use it like awesomely and, and effectively, you, you're also using the force to, to move it around. Mm. So if a regular person had a lightsaber, they turn it on, it would like fall to the floor and they'd be like, oh my God, I can't pick this up. I don't know how to pick this up. I don't know how to, what to do with it. And that's just goes with your theory that there's nothing special about Jedi's really, <laughs> because someone could just take a lightsaber. I would have given, how do you say his name? Kumail Nanjiani. Kumail Nanjiani, he's a very funny guy. Yeah. I really liked his film, The, the Big Sick. Yeah. Um, and said, here, I thought he was gonna do that. Here, here's your chance to be a Jedi. So now I know what it feels like being a real Jedi. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> what, 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 oh shit. <laughs> and then he starts just chopping people up. Why not? Yep. There should, that's a little rule that would have been neat in the Star Wars universe because it makes Jedi special. Also remove the rule that they could, they could be Thanos and grab a moon <laughs> and throw <laughs> it at Iron Man. <sighs> Do you think Darth Vader could throw a moon? I, you know what? I would be shocked if somewhere in the Star Wars canon, either the legacy or the modern or whatever the fuck, if that, this has probably happened, right? Oh this is certainly, if not Darth Vader, like, like Omo Khan, Darth, Darth Omo Khan Kadai, Someone the, in the some greatest book. Sith Lord who has ever lived, probably threw moons at somebody. 
<laughs> I'll bet you. I'll bet you it's happened. <laughs> I officially do not give a shit about the Star Wars canon. I just don't give a shit. I, I can appreciate this series in and of itself in like a bubble in a vacuum. It's like, yeah, Obi-Wan's kind of a neat character in this and I can enjoy it. Because you're, you're, you're looking for, and, and that again, that is the hollowness of it, it that I desperately want filled <laughs> is, is you're, the, you're, you're, you're done with the canon stuff. You're done with like, well. The, Leia doesn't know who Obi-Wan Kenobi was in a new, I don't give a you're, shit. You're looking for, I don't give a shit. They explain that in this though, Rich. Uh, he tells her, pretend you don't know me. Oh God, they didn't need to it's do seamless. that. Just it's fuck seamless. It. It's seamless, Rich. Oh. But we must be careful. No one must know, or it could endanger us both. Some, something else I don't really give a shit about, but it's also kind of a problem in the greater canon. Why are Luke and Leia special? I was thinking the same thing. Um, like, like there's Jedi all over the fucking place now. Cause there's a whole Inquisition. They're hunting old Jedi down. There's survivors, and there's Force-sensitive people all over the fucking place. And you'd think any one of them could be trained, and it doesn't need to be Luke or Leia. And that didn't make sense in the original movies. It's like, well, wait, is the Force just dead? There's no one else has this. That well, doesn't make they, 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 I mean, the backstory is they hunted down and murdered all the Jedi. Yeah. So there, they, they did establish in A New Hope that there were Jedis in the past, but in the present day, I didn't think so many survived. I thought only Yoda survived. Yeah. And Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan. Well, by the time you get to A New Hope, the Inquisitors, I guess, have killed all the rest of them. Let's, let's look at it from this perspective, because you were saying, why are Luke and Leia special? Yeah. Uh, you're thinking of it in the Force user perspective. I'm thinking of it from a character perspective, right? Uh-huh. Obi-Wan's friend, Anakin, and, and Padme, right? And Obi-Wan had nice words for Padme at the end, but I think he only met her once. He met her a couple times, and we don't know how, we don't know how many times well, he met her They had some adventures. They, they almost got mauled in a gladiator arena, gladiatorial arena by giant monsters. Those prequels are so just damaging to everything, aren't they? They're so... Okay. My point is, Padme was a... A queen, and then she became a senator, and so she was part of the rebellion. He kind of respects her, blah, 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 blah. Um, Anakin was an asshole from the get go, and it, it, she was the one who kind of made him lose his way from the celibacy of being a Jedi into becoming a hate filled monster. Are you allowed to love? I thought that was forbidden for a Jedi. And then they have kids, right? And then in the end, they say, what should we do with the kids? And Basil Oregano says, I'll take, take Leia. My, me and my wife, we've always wanted a baby girl. Okay. And then Yoda wisely says, take him to his family. The least likely place anyone will look. And then, and then in this, Obi-Wan's like, where, where's oh, her little baby Leia's been kidnapped. He, Fuck her. <laughs> She's the daughter of a, of a monster. <laughs> I mean, like, why would he care? And why does he care so much about Luke? Why? Because that's what he's been put on that planet to do until he dies. He's the son of his it, best friend. It, it makes sense if they're actually special and they're the only ones who can save the galaxy from right. Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine. But they're not. But they don't know that yet. I know. Anakin should, if I were Obi-Wan, I would kill Luke. <laughs> I'd be like, your father is, a, is, is the worst piece of shit ever. <laughs> and, and he's awful, and you're probably going to turn into him. See, this is why people hate The Last Jedi, though, because Luke almost kills Kylo Ren. What? Oh. Remember? He has that, that uh, brief moment where he thinks about killing Kylo Ren. And everybody hates that movie because of that. Oh, sure, sure, yes. Because he, he senses badness in Kylo Ren, right? Yeah, so he has a brief moment where he thinks about killing him but he doesn't kill him. But just the fact that he thought about it is enough to send a bunch of man babies into a, I, a fit. I was fine with that. Doesn't, doesn't Kylo Ren kill everybody in Jedi school? Yeah. Does that mean Baby Yoda's dead? Baby Yoda? What? I don't know where, how Baby Yoda ties in with the rest of everything Luke, else. Doesn't Luke, I haven't seen season two of The Mandalorian, but everybody fucking knows because it was all over the internet that Luke comes in yeah. and takes the baby. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah, as far as what happens after that. Yeah. With Kylo Ren showing up and killing the Jedi Temple. Did Kylo Ren kill Baby Yoda? We can only hope. It's like a simple little Star Wars film where you have a little kidnapped With a whole kid. bunch of fillers. It has all the little, it has a bunch of different beats and, and storylines from different Star Wars movies. You gotta rescue the princess, you gotta evade the empire, you learn some truths, you know. It, uh, all you gotta sneak somebody out under a trench coat. What, sure, sure. What you're saying is, it doesn't need to be a life, life or death, galaxy changing epic of unimaginable proportions, the likes of which we have never seen before. And that's why I liked the ending of it with Vader and uh, Obi Wan, where yeah. Obi Wan his, his guilt is lifted. I and that's like it. I even like the other part of the ending with Reva re rejecting the, the right. Vader way where she chooses not to stab Luke. I like that. Yeah. She starts off as a boring, like flat, angry character. One dimensional villain. And then they character. give her some dimension. And, and that's Way what I mean. Way too late in the series, but they get there. Right. Um, and and so you've got, yeah, these, these very basic little arcs. That's why it reminds me of Empire a lot because there is no big like, giant Death Star thing that they have to blow up, like the Rogue One, they have to get the planet and they have to blow this up. And it ends like, it ends in character way. Empire, the final battle, that Luke gets his hand chopped off and they rescue him and then, uh, and, 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 and that's what this is. It just needs to be shorter and it, and, and it all hangs on the, the, the notion that Anakin and Obi-Wan were the best of friends. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what happened. This is what the dark side did to Vader. And then the, the, the counterbalance of that is Reva's choice to embrace the dark side or the light side. And, and all that works. It just needs to be two hours instead of six. And uh, a couple, the, and, and up the action uh, yeah. sequences. And you've got a, a tight little, very basic Star Wars film. Uh, and that's, I think, that's what I, I like about it. It didn't, it didn't answer one question though, and I was curious, towards the end, she, Reva goes to Tatooine to find Luke Skywalker to kill him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To get revenge, what was she doing that for? To get revenge on Vader? Revenge on Vader, yeah. Okay. How does she know that Luke is Vader's son based on what she heard? If he's found you, if he's learned of the children, if I don't hear from you soon, I'll head to Tatooine. Owen will need help with the boy. I'm looking for a farmer. Name is Owen. And um, okay, I'm 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 fine with that. But I thought they were going to answer the question of how does Vader know that Luke is his son? He doesn't. He still doesn't. Right. Because uh, he Season does. Two. Well, maybe in something future, but. Um, well, no, because at the second he learns, obviously he would do the most obvious thing and go to Tatooine, right? I mean. Because very clearly, you know, Vader knew in Empire, right? Obviously, because he reveals it to yeah. Luke. And so he knew, unless he found out somewhere between A New Hope and Empire. I think he just figured it out because both their last names are Skywalker. <laughs> well, that's right. They didn't even, they didn't change, even change Luke's his name. fucking name. Because these, this whole thing is stupid. Jesus fucking Christ. Mm -hmm. And they put him on Tatooine. Well, the most obvious place. Vader didn't know his name in A New Hope. He knew his name in Empire somehow. Mm -hmm. Vader wants us all dead. He doesn't want you at all. He's after somebody called a uh, Skywalker. Like, he, he wanted him. To be fair, the name of the guy who blew up the Death Star probably would have been gone around. Like, oh. this guy called Luke Skywalker blew up that Death Star. So Darth did. Vader says, Skywalker, you say? <laughs> he, he did find out in between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. That was a very awkward meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Vader's, he has his cup of Wait, coffee. his name's Skywalker and he's on Tatooine? He spits the coffee out like in the mask. <laughs> like Spaceballs? Yeah, like Spaceballs. He's, yeah, he's drinking his coffee, reading the, reading the galactic news. Skywalker blows up Death Star. That's what he's doing. What? That's what he, uh, Vader's reading the news while he's flying in his TIE fighter. <laughs> To the, back to the nearest uh, Star Destroyer in his, in his 16 year long flight. <laughs> Just got the paper out. <laughs> Local farm boy Luke Skywalker blows up Death Star. You suppose he felt like an idiot when it turned out he was on Tatooine the whole time too? 
Well, that's oh. another thing. At the end of this, Reva knows that Luke is on Tatooine. So it's not like some big mystery anymore. She's probably going to tell somebody at some point, right? Yeah, but I guess Vader cannot find out until after A New Hope, or else logically he would have gone there and scooped up his son, I guess, and said, you're with me. I'm going to teach you to be my new apprentice and whatever. This is why I don't care about Star Wars canon. <laughs> it, you ca if you cared about Star Wars canon, it would be impossible to enjoy Star Wars. When you watch, when you watch the original trilogy, you just have to forget that the prequels exist. When you watch this, you have to forget everything else existed. <laughs> it's the only way you can enjoy this shit. Well, 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 one other thing, one other note is I predicted early on when we were talking about this show that during his weakest moment, that's when Qui-Gon would appear to Obi-Wan and help him. But it, it, but instead he just shows up again just, in, a, in a fake beard as a teaser for season two. Right. That would have been such a better moment uh -huh. if he didn't say anything. If, if, if Obi-Wan just saw him, they kind of nod. You know what? It's like, oh, it's back. His, 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 uh, his mojo is back. You know what? You have him trapped under the rocks at the end like he was, and instead of thinking about Baby Leia, which was just creepy. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe you just hear Qui-Gon's voice saying, it wasn't your fault. Sure. Wasn't your fault, Obi-Wan. But you have to physically see Liam Neeson. So everybody watching the show can applaud and film reaction videos of them crying. <laughs> they did that with, with Luke when he showed up in Mandalorian season two and everybody lost their mind because it's a thing they recognize. To me, the obvious, obvious thing to do is to have Obi-Wan's buried under rocks. Yeah, and he has, he's like thinking of Darth, he hears Darth Vader's voice, he's thinking of baby Leia and whatever. And then Obi-Wan, he does get his mojo back. Mm -hmm. um, and he becomes super powerful, throwing rocks at Darth Vader, cutting his mask off, kicking the shit out of him. And that is vaguely unmotivated mm -hmm. that he gets his mojo back. But like you said, having Qui-Gon whisper, you know, something, some kind of words or statement that changes his, his perspective and that gives him the strength. Because the, the impression I've gotten is that Obi-Wan is basically guilty. He's, in his head, he's created this monster. Well, they said they had that moment come from him actually talking with Vader. But then you gotta put Qui-Gon in it somewhere. So just throw him in at the ends. Whatever you do, make sure he has a fake beard on. <laughs> <laughs> leave, leave Liam Neeson alone. He filmed that over Skype. Him and Ian McDermott, they both just filmed their bits on their computers. Yeah. They digitally added Ian McDermott's makeup. I know. I wasn't even sure that was Ian McDermott. It didn't sound like him. I'm pretty sure that was actually him. It, it, it was. I it looked was, it oh, up. Oh, you looked yeah. it up. Okay. Because I was like, who's playing the Emperor? That's my job. <laughs> at, at, at this point, you sound more like the Emperor than Ian McDermott. <laughs> he sounded like Bob Hope. He looked like Bob Hope, like old Bob Hope. <laughs> or you know who he looked like? He looked like um, Bob Newhart without the, any makeup on. Oh. It just, they just put a hood on Bob Newhart, and he's just like, forget about Obi-Wan. I have forgotten all about him. He's nothing to me. You are now my servant. I, and Vader's like, I will serve only you. So that's where Vader's like, okay, I know Obi-Wan's on Tatooine. I'm, I'm just going to fucking let it go. And I'm just going to do the business of the Empire. Mm -hmm. They reset that. I don't know. Qui Gon. Which is where we ended Revenge of the Sith, basically. It's yeah, the same thing. So, so a little pointless adventure happened, and then they went back. <laughs> but that is Star Wars. I would say it would be a pretty good challenge to cut this to a two hour and 20 minute movie, a standard Star Wars feature film length, to take this and cut it all down. Sure. I think someone could do that and call it Star Wars Episode 3.1. Yeah. I really like the moment when Tala used the Boba Fett thermal nuclear detonator to blow herself up. Her and uh, the loader, I really liked, I felt a more emotion for the loader exploding <laughs> than Chalia. But 
the loader only cared because it was programmed to. Okay. <laughs> but she could have thrown that grenade. <laughs> she was injured though, wasn't she? She was, but like Reva and all the stormtroopers were like coming down the hallway, and she just, I would have thrown it. <clears throat> you know. But that's not uh, as emotional, Mike. It, it it was like a that was a cheap emotional moment. It would have had more impact had Obi Wan smooched on her. <laughs> it would have, yes. He can't do that because he's a Jedi. But come on, but they bend the rules with everything else. They have a nice scene where they're talking and they, they really start to enjoy each other's company. And she, she puts a little move on him and um, you know they smooch and then he says no. And then when she blows herself up, there's even more emotional weight than just a character that we kind of like that dies. Because that was his chance, you know. I don't. I don't even think you blow. I don't even think you have to blow her up. You just have the moment, like at the end, after everything, sure. he has to turn her down because he he's got his he's got his mission. He needs to do the mission, the That's the force. True. I've got to make sure Luke Skywalker gets trained properly. I got to go back into the desert. Can't can't do love. Yeah, I was gonna say. To be fair, they obviously didn't plan out the original trilogy. Otherwise, they wouldn't have Luke and Leia kissing. But that was before Star Wars was what it is. Yeah, now you got to think this shit through. I and don't know. That, and that's what people liked about the original trilogy, those three characters, Luke, Leia, and Han. Mm -hmm. Han, Han Solo is a smarmy, sassy smuggler guy who's full of himself, and Leia, you know, and the, and the smooching, and there's a little, little love triangle thing going on in the very beginning, and then... Then it all kind of like then You're not a bunch of emotionless weirdos. Then it becomes emotionless weirdos when Return of the Jedi comes around and Han and Leia are just like scene filler. Mm -hmm. They're just they're just like trees, <laughs> like set pieces. <laughs> it's like a like a like a piece of scenery that shoot that shoot blasters and then Lucas focuses on Vader and. Uh, uh, Fucking the emperor, and, and I don't know. He just gave up on the charm. Where's the white and Irvin Kershner direct Return of the Jedi? I don't know. It's because it's because in Jedi Luke gets the cult personality. He becomes a Jedi, and he instantly becomes boring. Yeah, yeah. He goes from the, the, the farm boy looking for adventure to yes, father. I sense the good in you. I have drained all emotion from my personality. I'm creepy now. <laughs> No, Emperor, I will never join you. I am a Jedi, like my father. I have been programmed into the Jedi cult now. He becomes a creepy priest man. Yeah, he does. That's Luke's arc. He becomes a creepy priest man. <laughs> That's fair. So what, are we, what, what happens to the Star Wars now? Don't give a shit. Star Wars, to me, at this point, I'm like Tim Robinson in that sketch where he's like, I don't want to be around anymore. I don't want to be around anymore. Well, I just think about Star Wars. I just want to tear this shit off. Uh, uh, I think well, Ewan McGregor says he would be in, open to doing more. He's like, eh, every now and then it could be fun. Uh, and obviously they got Qui-Gon back. Season two, they'll go on another quaint adventure that they can get away with doing without it affecting the original trilogy, which means it'll have no consequences again. We got to find out what happens to Reva. They'll just give her her own spin-off show, that's right? That's, that's, that'll be probably the Probably what they, The Book of Reva? The Book of Reva. They did everything they possibly could other than have him smooch on Tila. <laughs> which, was, which was a big miss. And, and, and Qui-Gon's force ghost, like, giving Obi-Wan a pep talk as he's crushed under some rocks. Obi-Wan, listen to me, okay, <laughs> listen. So now Qui-Gon sounds like Trump? Listen, it wasn't your fault. The guy was a prick from the get-go, okay? Now just get, get up, get some, get some balls, okay? And throw the rocks at the guy in the plastic costume. So I could get back to Mar-a-Lago. I would have thrown the rocks. I would have thrown all the rocks. The best rocks. I have the best the, rocks. The biggest rocks. I would have thrown them all at the guy in the plastic 70s costume. <laughs> I don't know why you can't do it. Just, just do it already, okay? <laughs> Save oh, the little girl. She's got a lot of potential. A lot of potential. <laughs> she could be my future wife she in another could, two years. She could be a new wife. I got a friend. We could bring her to his island. <laughs> 
A lot of potential. A lot of potential, a lot of potential there. And don't forget, Darth Vader snaps a little kid's neck in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was pretty, uh, pretty upsetting. He was a little too mean in this, don't you think? No, it was the appropriate he amount was of the mean. appropriate amount of Darth Vader. It wasn't like the end of Rogue One, that hallway scene that everybody jizzed their pants over, where he's just slashing everybody, and he's like a, like a horror villain. Uh, oh, we have to address something else, too. Oh. That I kept saying that uh, Hayden Christensen was in the costume, and he oh, wasn't. Oh, yeah, it was not Hayden it was, Christensen. It was tall guys. So we re re retract those comments. I don't retract the comment that all those scenes are still awkward. I thought Hayden Christensen's only appearance in the show was going to be him in the tank of water. But he gets to act at the end when they cut his Darth Vader mask open and we see his face and we hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And it's a little mixture between his voice and, and James Earl Jones' computer voice. Anakin's gone. I am what remains. So now that the Obi-Wan show is over, what's next? They shouldn't do anything else with Obi-Wan. Except for season two. Can't wait for season two. They're bringing back Liam Neeson. It's going to be so exciting. Are they going to find a way to make Liam Neeson like come back to life? <laughs> they could be a Liam, whole Liam Neeson prequel prequel. Ooh. We haven't seen we haven't seen the origins of Qui Gon Jinn. Oh, there you go. There we know literally nothing about him. Where did he hear about the prophecy? Why is he so interested in the prophecy? <laughs> is there a prophecy that Qui Gon Jinn would find the prophecy? He could find the prophecy. Did he meet Darth Plagueis? Did he fight Darth Plagueis? Ooh. We'd have to young oh, young Qui Gon. Oh, that would be a great. Uh, uh, we'll give him free ideas here. That'd be a great framing idea. It'll be called. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, the show, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And o o Obi-Wan will build his little house. Remember, he has a little house. Yeah, on in, the top in, of the hill, yeah. he'll, he'll build his little house and he'll commune with Qui-Gon and Qui-Gon will tell him stories. So it'll from... be like young Indiana Jones Chronicles? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> that show was such a hit. They'll have like a parallel adventure where things that Obi-Wan is doing on his adventure reflects the things that young Qui-Gon went through on his adventure as he's guiding Obi-Wan through everything. Or, or, a, or, a, a, or an incomplete adventure that Qui-Gon had in his youth. Ooh, yeah, and Obi-Wan has to finish the adventure. Jesus Christ, we should be paid for this shit. Oh, Qui-Gon will tell him story. And then you don't have to use Ewan McGregor, Qu McGregor quite as much. The sure. first like four or five episodes will be just be him like kind of like sitting there and Qui-Gon's ghost will be telling the story. We cut to flashback. You get a younger actor, actor to play young Qui-Gon. You don't want to do the DH thing with 70 year old Liam Neeson. No, you have to do that. They no. can't recast. No, that, recast. That leads to disaster. Look what I'm, happened with Solo. I'm pushing for the recast. We have young, Liam Neeson, some some kid, twenty years old, the early days of that. And then he Does could he have, have a son? No, I don't know. But then we could have Yoda. We could bring Yoda back. Oh, thank God! And then um, Yo, and, and we'll learn how how Qui Gon became so rebellious as as a Jedi Master, right? <laughs> and then he'll and then it'll lead up to halfway through the season. That's when uh, Qui Gon will say, Obi Wan, now you must complete the journey I started. 60 years ago, or 50 years ago, or whatever the <laughs> fuck it was. And then we'll discover Darth Plagueis is still alive. Oh my God! Dark Plagueis was the one that really stole the Sith crystals that Qui-Gon was trying to replace in the Temple of Doom? Ugnan. <laughs> Ugnan. Ugnan. The first, the first Jedi Lord? Yes, but who was an ancestor? The first, the temple of the first Jedi Lord, who was a, a, an ancestor of Darth Plagueis. Guess who discovered? Guess who discovers that Darth Plagueis survived? Who? Who? Who killed him? Oh my God! We're getting Palpatine in this shit too. Obi Wan and oh Palpatine my. team up <laughs> to fight Darth Plagueis. Plagueis threatens both of us. Plagueis has a plan to take over the Empire from me. 
Does Yoda have to assist from Dagobah to like project the force? Yoda, Yoda temporarily leaves Dagobah to come help. He has a little adventure. Because we well. got to see, Yoda, you know, Yoda hasn't met up with Palpatine since the end of Revenge of the Sith. What are, how are they going to react when they see each other now that Palpatine's the Emperor? How are they going to react? What's going to happen? They all have to work together to stop Darth. Darth Plagueis is the new, like, baddie. He's the Thanos of this, the new Star Wars universe. Oh, God. And uh, Vader might show up, too. Are they going to have to hitch a ride on a ship that's that's captained by the, the old captain of Padme's royal guard? That, that sure. one guy? Panaka? Panaka. Oh, Panaka. Yeah. Panaka. Panaka, he's, he's, it's his ship. They got to they gotta take his ship. A Naboo the cruiser. Yeah, we could yeah. bring back. And everybody films reaction videos for YouTube of them crying when Captain Panaka shows up again. Well, he's a secret. We don't reveal him at all until the actual episode comes out. That's well, the, yeah, but then the people, wham moment. And then, young Panaka. Yeah. Young Panaka. Yeah, because we have to remember. No, no, no. No, this old Panaka you, be old, in the Obi Wan yeah. section of the adventure. Then you can bring the real actor back, the actual actor. The back. the the Qui Gon flashbacks are young Qui Gon and a young Plagueis before he was betrayed by Sidious. But then in the in the present day, you know, post uh, A New Hope, Plagueis is super old, like the Emperor, mm -hmm. but he's ten times more powerful because he's been just filled with vengeance. Dark side has been brewing within him for 20 years. And he's, he's planning his revenge against Palpatine. And Obi-Wan discovers this, and you can't have someone more powerful than Palpatine take over the Empire. And, and Obi-Wan sends a secret coded message to Palpatine. You've got to help with this shit. You started this shit. You've got to come help <laughs> with it. Bring Vader too. I promise we won't fight. And then Yoda will show a little egg will land. <laughs> and then Palpatine will say, ah, my little green friend. <laughs> Help me, I must. Plagueis, Emperor knew he must not become. <laughs> this sounds too big for a Disney Plus show. This is like a movie. This is like a trilogy of movies. You're thinking too big. Okay, well. Can you just, during all of this, just over my face, can you just insert the, I don't want to be around anymore image? Yeah, okay, I can do that. <laughs> I, can do that. <laughs> I don't want to be around anymore. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Star Wars, we've, we've got some ideas for Star Wars. Um, uh, they'll probably steal them because they're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, put a, we put a whole three minutes of thought into this. Yeah, and it's not too bad. Let's let's uh, <laughs> let's just go. Uh, let's just go. Let's just go. I'm, I'm done. Right. That's the, the best thing we've said all two hours we've been doing. This. Goodbye.